Hello, this is Mavis, and this is my husband, Cliff Lisi. And we have a scripture from Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 that we would like to share with you. Um, let me read it for you. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And Cliff, um, what is kind of a definition of mercy and grace? Yeah. Um, grace, in, in my mind, is um, getting what you don't deserve. And... Uh, Mercy, in a nutshell, is not getting what you do deserve. Yeah, and, and I've experienced that many times. Right, and I just think it's awesome that Jesus is our high priest over every other important leader. He's our high priest, and yet he came to earth. He did the things we did. He was tempted uh, by the same things we're tempted by. And um, so he understands when we have weaknesses and we give in to sin, and we all do. And he's right there. I think of a sin that he was tempted to commit. He was, um, there were many, but he was in uh, the wilderness for 40 days and did not eat. He was human at that point and God at the same time, but he was hungry. And Satan came to him and tempted him to turn a stone into bread, which he could do. But he knew it was wrong, and so he didn't give in to sin. And there are just many other examples. And it sets up a way that we can feel free to come to him when we do do something wrong and ask his forgiveness and mercy and grace. And Cliff has a, a story about a person he knew um, that in the end had to come to the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Samuel. Samuel was 19, 18 when he moved to Chicago to live with his oldest brother and his wife, his oldest brother's wife. And he was a troublemaker. He loved, he was partying all the time and drank a lot and trouble. Uh, but he came to the States, he's from Mexico, and he came to the States to make some money. He didn't want to stay long. It was going to be a year. And so his plan was to make money, like I said, but the way he thought he would get it, he would accomplish that would be by praying, but praying to Satan. And he did. He, he prayed many times, and he prayed that Satan would help him to make a lot of money in exchange for his soul. Um, did but, he go to church or anything during that time? Well, his brother didn't go to church much at the time, but soon after that, he started talking about coming to Michigan from Chicago. And so Samuel would pray to Satan that he would kill his brother and his brother's wife. Uh, not long after that, uh, on one of the trips over here, uh, the brother and his wife had an accident. It totaled their car, but they came out uh, uninjured, and so within two weeks after the accident, they all moved back. He, they pretty much dragged him with them all the way over here to Michigan and started going to church. And so they were going to a church, and um, um, he hated it. He kept on partying and doing what he was doing, but he hated going to church. And even in church, he kept praying to Satan, that Satan would kill his brother and, and, and his brother's wife. Um, but he was, he was tormented. There was something about being here and, and probably, well, probably because of the prayer and what he was doing, 
he felt tormented. And, and one night at church, the pastor had preached a, a salvation message and, and, and God touched his heart and he accepted Christ that night. And his life changed, his life changed. And um, that was back in 1992. Um, soon after that, he was walking to work. It was in January, it was cold, and he would walk to work. And he heard a voice, just as clear as day, right by him. And the voice said, Samuel, ¿por qué has hecho lo que, lo que has hecho? And uh, he's talking to him in Spanish, and, and it was, Samuel, why have you done what you did? And, um, and he knew the voice, it was Satan, and he said, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Um, and um, so the pastor took him under his wing and began to discipleship, disciple him, he began to grow, and his life changed. He had come to the throne of grace. He had come for mercy, and he found it in spite of what we would think is almost inconceivable we don't hear stories like that very often but he stayed at that church soon after that he met his wife they had about four or five kids and I went to the uh, one of his daughter's wedding just yesterday and uh, they're, they're all serving the Lord it's a precious family the throne of grace what a place what a wonderful place to meet God and, and the throne of grace could be right here, right now, right where you are, sitting or driving. Well, hopefully you're not driving and watching this. But uh, God is good, and they've been faithful. He's been faithful for many, many years. And even though that's more of an extreme story of sin, I just want us to realize that we all have a problem with sinning and sometimes it's hard to forgive ourselves and there are things that we do to keep us on the right path but when we do mess up or sin we want to remember that we can come to the throne of god and for his grace and his mercy his forgiveness his love his encouragement and that's the message that we would like you to remember from what we presented today and especially whatever you're going through right now, there's a throne of grace waiting and a God of grace who loves you, waiting to meet you and meet your need today.